Join us as we celebrate the heroes whose love knows no boundaries. Tonight is all about parenting on DXB Today. Welcome back to DXB Today. It is a Global Parent Day and tonight we honor and recognize the unconditional love, dedication and sacrifices and tireless efforts of parents everywhere. Indeed. <laughs> you know, this is a day that is celebrated globally to acknowledge the incredible role that parents play in shaping uh, the next generation and the future of our world. That's right, and we will be joined by experts for thought-provoking discussions that will leave you with a renowned appreciation for the unconditional love that parents pour into raising their children. Guys, I'm not a parent, but I love learning from parents just so that they can scare me. <laughs> but tell me, don't scare me, what are your favourite things about being parents? <laughs> she asked you, Tom. You got Tom's going to scare me. Tom and you like, can't copy oh, my God. answer. <laughs> I I don't know if you should be taking any parenting advice from me. Tom, that's for you've sure. got three. I have got three, um, and one that's about to fly the nest. So she's just doing her levels this year. So uh, Mol's eighteen, but yeah, I mean, I suppose if she, it's looking back on it, it's yeah, I regret the time that I wasn't around, mm. as it were, because you can get very wrapped up in. In, in, in work life here and you lose that balance, uh, that family work balance here, especially, you know, in the, in the, in the sort of work that I do. Um, and I, I do look back at it, I got, if, if, ironically, my daughter's literally sitting A-levels at the moment, so I went to her graduation a couple of weeks ago, I've got something a little later on this week as well. But you do sort of look back and go, ah, should have gone to more school plays, should have done that a few more times. Um, so yeah, a little bit of regrets, but yeah, I've got the other two to make, it up, <laughs> make up for lost time. I have a five and a half year old, so we are at that stage in our relationship where she thinks they're safe, uh, you raise them right, um, you are not the reason why they end up you know, on a therapist's, uh, I don't know, appointment years from now. You know, just stuff like that gives me a lot of anxiety, but overall, I recommend it. <laughs> I must say, both of you are doing an amazing job. So, thank yes, you. I'm definitely going to come to you, you for haven't parenting spoke to my tips. Kids, yeah. no. <laughs> you haven't seen me at 7:30 a.m. <laughs> I don't think you want to see anyone at 7:30 a.m. at school drop off. True. I've yeah. regularly dropped off kids for my friends for school drop off at six o'clock in the morning, and the traffic, yeah. like at that time, is just crazy. So. Hats off to both of you, for sure. Right, listen, uh, we will try to get to the bottom of all things parenting, but thankfully we have an expert on hand. Our guest co-host for today is a woman who's made it her business to ensure parents have support raising kids here in the UAE. So, time now to reveal to you who our guest co-host is tonight. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm known as Principal Lisa, the UAE's super nanny. On the show today, we're going to be talking about parenting styles, choosing a school, everything parenting. Principal Lisa with us here today with best, best be on best behaviour. Exactly, right? yeah. Uh, I Lisa, hope my posture's right. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa herself is, uh, as you heard, a bespoke parent guide, mother of three. And we'll share uh, more about her journey with us shortly. But before all that, uh, Jay Shetty was in town uh, earlier on this month uh, and our very own Nimi Mehta had a chance to see him for a heartfelt chat. Let's take a look. Here I am with none other than Jay Shetty at Atlantis The Royal, where it's just so amazing to have you in Dubai, in the UAE. We love you here, so thank you. How are you? I love being here, and I'm so grateful to be here. Now, you've been coming to Dubai for quite a while now. It has changed. It evolves every time you come. Tell me what you think of Dubai and the, and the movement and the way it's going forward. I think it's unbelievable. I mean, Dubai's just a phenomenal place. It surprises me every time I, every time I come here. and. It's, it's the people, it's the culture, it's, I mean, the, the development out here, it, the experiences. It's, it's such a phenomenal place and I feel so grateful that it's become such a mainstay in my travel every year. Mm -hmm. Like, you know that, I'm always telling him, I'm, I hope I get to come out to Dubai yeah. this year. And so I look forward to being here every single year and I've, I think I've been coming out multiple times by, by now. I think it's one of my favorite places to be and that's why this little break I had in my world tour, I decided to spend it in Dubai. You know, to do what you have done, I think for those that don't know your journey, 
You've literally come from nothing and, and made it to where you are today. That comes with a different type of mindset. So what would you say has been one of the most pivotal parts of your success and that success mindset? I think I've always been driven by a deeper purpose of wanting to improve the world, help people, to serve them and support them. And I think that's been what's fueled all of that drive and desire. So there's been many pivotal moments, but that was definitely one of them in unlocking a power inside of myself. I think a lot of us think of things like, you know what, I'm not that creative. Or, you know what, like, I don't know if I can do that. Or I'm not an entrepreneur. We have all these limits in our mind where we say things like, I'm not that, I'm too much of this, I'm too little of that. And in a moment where you're put into such a painful predicament, all of that goes out the window and you realize you're ready to grow and evolve and learn whatever it is you need to do in order to push forward. Uh, exactly, these things don't happen overnight. And you know, one thing that I am really passionate about is using your voice for good. But one thing is discovering your voice. And can you tell me when, at what stage in your life that happened, where you realized you had a voice, you had something to say, and then how you wanted to use it? I think for me, it was learning from the monks and then the books I was reading. So I was always fascinated by ancient wisdom and modern science and how they work together. And so the monks were teaching me ancient wisdom and I was blown away by the ideas that existed in these literatures that are thousands of years old. And at the same time, I was reading behavioral science and learning about why humans do what they do and how they think and how the mind works. And I thought, wait a minute, if these ideas can be put together, not only could people be inspired, but they could actually be effective. I think sometimes what happens is we either become too philosophical or we become too practical. And I think philosophy is really powerful in grounding you and practicality is really good at getting you to move forward. And so to me, if I could create practical philosophy for people to practice and put into action in their lives, then that's what my voice was. My voice was curating things that I was passionate about and presenting them in an effective way. And that came through my teens, it came through my 20s, and I think that's, going back to your earlier question, I think one of the things that people often mistake is people look at my seven-year online journey now, and they think, wow, that's seven years, that's quick. And I'm like, well, I started doing this when I was 18 years old, so I've been doing this for like 17 years now. And then my parents forced me to go to public speaking and drama school when I was 11, so I've doing, been doing this for another seven years, so then you've got 24 years, so it's been a 24-year journey, not a seven-year journey. And I think that hopefully that gives people a bit of solace to be like, okay, well, if I'm on year two, things don't have to work out in year three. It's, it's dedication and commitment over a long period of time. Uh, and Dubai has definitely become a massive hub for entrepreneurs to really thrive. You see it happening more and more, people really fulfilling their dreams over here. On an entrepreneurship level, how important has ownership been for you along your journey? Ownership as an entrepreneur is so powerful because I think a lot of us today who have podcasts, who have social media channels, who have our own TV shows, if, if you have it, on our own platforms, the majority of people who had those would never have been given a chance on traditional media. So I didn't get a shot on traditional media. I applied to so many traditional opportunities and never got a chance. And I know that's true for so many of my peers in the space that I talk to. And so there's something really beautiful happening right now that we have the opportunity to hear from so many more voices and so many more faces that would never have been given a shot. And that's why ownership is so powerful because when you're tuning into On Purpose, it's it's created in a way that we can make it as long as we want or as short as we want or whatever we want it to be and there's something special about that and so I feel really grateful that the world has evolved in a way of allowing us this freedom to truly create because I honestly don't think I would ever have connected with any of my audience had I been reliant on traditional means. And you know, like we, like we discussed, this has been 24 years in the making for you and this hasn't happened overnight. This has been endless amount of hours of work, um, work ethic. Can you tell me what are your views on hustle culture? You know, the work-life balance, is that really a thing or are we just trying to make something up to make ourselves feel better? I think it all starts with one simple question. What do you actually want? Because whatever you want comes at a cost and a price and work. And depending on what you want, it's a different set of costs, prices and value. And that applies to thinking about anything you want in the world. And so what I wanted in the world was a platform where I could truly inspire people to find their purpose. And I wanted to open that out to hopefully billions of people across the world. 
That is a grand vision and requires a lot of effort and requires a lot of work. I would just encourage people to choose the stress they want. Don't choose the stress that your parents want or society wants or your mate wants or what social media is telling you. Like, choose what you want and chase it because that's when it's going to feel fulfilling. Make your choice. There you go. You heard it from Jay Shetty. Thank you so much for your you, time. Lily. So grateful to you and enjoy the rest of your time. In Thanks so much, Nimi, and thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Huge fan of Jay Shetty right there. Do you guys know that Jay Shetty is actually Nimi's brother-in-law? Yeah. yeah. Did you know that? Okay, so I'm the only one who didn't know, know that. Now joining <laughs> us in studio. I expected more of a reaction just, from I'm, you. I'm, I'm absolutely I'm, I'm gobsmacked. It's, it's not I'm every day that you have Jay Shetty as your brother-in-law. I want to be adopted that one into, into conversation, that. conversation, did she? <laughs> yes. nice. Now joining us in studio is an experienced teacher, educational leader and family coach. Please welcome to the show, Principal Lisa. Lisa, Hi. thank you so much for joining oh, us today. it's my pleasure. Uh, we're all going to be at our best behavior today. Oh, I, I, I promise you. Less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lisa, do you have the manual? Because we're all trying to find that manual that's going to tell you the right things to do to become the, the, the perfect parent. Actually, I do. Ooh. At home, in my office, I have a big <laughs> folder that's that thick full of all the tips and tricks that I've gathered over the last 33 years. And if it isn't in there, well, <laughs> <laughs> so no, I do have that, but no, of course, that parenting's changing all the time and every family is unique. It is this evolution of parenting, isn't it? I guess it sort of goes back to our, our previous comments a little earlier on. So, I mean, when you see, um, looking at Dubai, for example, here we are, DXB today, we're looking at Dubai, such a cosmopolitan population, so many different nationalities, so many different ways of parenting, all in one melting pot. Um, is it, does it throw up its own challenges, Dubai, when it comes to parenting? I think, I, I, look, personally, I think that, that living in Dubai brings about a lot of challenges. Right. One of those is because a lot of our families have got two parents working. So that then leads into what do we do about childcare? Mm. We don't have our extended family here. So families are, you know, facing a lot of challenges here. But actually, at its very core, all challenges are you know relevant to everybody all over the world and all families are doing the best they can with right. the skills that they have at that time and that's what my role often is is to come alongside that family and give them maybe some fresh new practical skills mm. Yeah, to your point, Tom, I think Dubai is such a... Because I can't speak on being a parent, but I can speak on being a student being raised in Dubai. So when I was, You've you know... I, <laughs> I've been parented, but also when I was in school, around my teen years, very primitive age for a young woman, my classmates were being dropped off to school in Lamborghinis, you know, Ooh. and that wasn't the reality in my house. Um, and, you know, we worked, and, you know, since I was a child, I had a part-time job and things like that. So um, we had a lot of values around hard work and and money and, and all of that stuff. So it was very strange being a child going to school and your classmates are now being dropped off in Lamborghinis and what that says about you. So how do you navigate those challenges for kids in Dubai? It must, it must be very difficult to get out of a Lamborghini with a heavy satchel <laughs> and your lunchbox and all the other bits and pieces that go with it as well. Possible. You can beat the traffic though. <laughs> That's true. You know, look, this isn't unique to Dubai, is it? It's yeah. all unique to this part of the world is that, you know, I can remember myself. I went to this very expensive school in the UK and my mother drove and picked me up and she had kind of Labour stickers in the back of the car <laughs> presenting the wrong side of the government at the time. You know, these things have been going on for years. Yeah. That, that We do have to hold our own and have that confidence. And I think that that's what's important is we need to be teaching children that growth mindset. Right. There are so many different parenting styles these days. I mean, we often joke that for modern day gentle parenting, you need to keep aside at least a good eight to nine hours, or you use the good old fashioned way to get in the car right now and everything happens in a matter of seconds. It's not always practical to practice gentle parenting, but at the same time, you don't want to traumatize them. You don't want them to see that temperamental side of yours very often. So how do you strike the balance? And I think it's really important that you've raised this because there's a lot of misconceptions around gentle parenting and I think that is what is exhausting our parents. 
is the belief that gentle parenting doesn't mean we have any boundaries and that we selflessly give our lives to our children. In fact, the fundamental principle of gentle parenting is self-care, and that's sometimes the part that's missing, is that all parents are doing the best that they can. And in your gentle parenting method, it's about holding boundaries consistently and with, and with love and with empathy and patience. It isn't about not having any boundaries at all. And when we don't have boundaries, we find ourselves kind of pushed up against the wall as parents and we get so frustrated. And that's when we shout, get in the car. <laughs> Question for you. And uh, interesting to get your opinion on where it is. It's, it's, it's quite often a go-to for a little bit of uh, respite for, uh, for parents. Screen time. <laughs> Has screen time been a blessing for parenting or is it a blight? So, screen time. Well, before we went into COVID, we talked a lot about the, you know, the disadvantages. You know, we talked about that screen time was this, that was something that we didn't want our children to do. Mm. But then we went into COVID and a lot of psychologists were saying to us, actually allow the children the choice, the space. They need that because they haven't got their friends at school, so they need to watch Frozen over and over again and mm. um, so i think screen time needs to be balanced in fact the american association of pediatrics say that children actually under the age of two shouldn't have any screen time mm. and i don't think parents are entirely aware of that meal time particularly is quite hard i feel like if there's an ipad in front um, it's easier to have her sat in one place and finish her meal versus if there's no iPad, if it's just toys, she's, she will leave her seat, she will not be there, and mealtime generally tends to take longer. Are you talking longer. about you or your daughter? Uh, uh, both of us. Okay, right. <laughs> so would you, I mean, I know, I know it's really bad to offer screen time uh, during dinner or lunch, but how do we navigate that? <laughs> So I work with families every day. I go into their family homes. I work with real life families. I understand what you're describing. But actually, if I was going to come in and work with you, I'd love to reset that for you a little bit because there are other ways that, you know, that we can do that. But I don't actually say don't have any screens at all. And for some families, I was coaching a Danish family recently about when they go into a restaurant that the children ate their food and then they had a screen, they had their iPad in the back and a little fluffy roll-out rug from Ikea. They laid it onto the, onto, into the restaurant on the chair and the child could enjoy watching something while their parents ate the rest of their dinner. You know, iPads and screens have their place, mm. but it's why it's being used that usually my job is to try and step in and investigate. Can these parents raise my child? <laughs> because there's no way she's going to run. Yeah, That's for sure. sure. I'm on my way. I'm in an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see a little bit about that after the break. We will be addressing the unique challenges that comes with single parenting. So stay with us. Welcome back to DXB Today, where now we're joined by an expert who knows about the highs and the lows of expat parenting uh, here in Dubai, especially when you're a single parent. That's right. Now, she's supported many mums and dads in their journey, so please join me in welcoming to the show psychologist Dr. Vesaliki Simoglu from Thrive Wellbeing Centre. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, tell us a little bit about Thrive Wellbeing Centre. Yes, we offer different kinds of uh, support to individuals, couples, families, children, assessments, and of course psychotherapy and counseling uh, support. Incredible. So, uh, particularly for, for parents, we have you know, individual support and family therapy. I think it's particularly helpful, especially for single parent households. I, I'm, you know, I'm a single parent, and what I've noticed is that because she's with me 80% of the time throughout the weekdays and mm -hmm. weekends with her dad, I'm the disciplinarian because I'm in charge of the day-to-day -day activities, whereas her dad's home is uh, the holiday home, as I like to call it, is where the rules are more relaxed. No late nights, no rushing, lots mm -hmm. of outings, movie night every night. So that's almost a fun home, yeah. and my home is almost like boarding school. The rules home. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yes. So how how do I come out victorious from this? How do I win over here? <laughs> you need to rebalance, yeah? Maybe it's a case of rebalancing a little bit or mm. of adding some more, uh, you know, fun elements, making sure that you take note and introduce moments in your day-to-day -day with your daughter where you do have yeah. that fun element there every single day. Yeah. You know, it, it, five minutes can go a long way in, uh, in supporting our children and playing with them with, uh, without distraction. 
We talk a lot about how fast-paced life is here in Dubai. And we were just talking, in fact, with Lisa, about the fact that that could have an impact on parents in general. Is it equally the same when it comes to single parent as well? Is that something you need to be aware of? Completely, completely, because a single parent it deals with, uh, with an additional layer of challenges because of the fact that they're raising the child alone. Mm. So there's even less support. We cannot lean on, on, on our partner. So the partner will step in, uh, one will do the drop-off, one will do the pick-up, whereas where, in a single parenting uh, family, in a single parent family, you have just one parent doing everything, mm. being the mother, the father, the professional, the, you know, the support system, the extended family, the friend. Mm. So the, the, the burden is, is way more important. Yeah. Dr. Vasiliki, how important then in that situation is self-care? And how would you recommend that a single parent who is time poor finds ways for self-care? You know, we always need to remember that behind the parent there's a, there's a woman or a man uh, who, who got together to have this child so they have their own needs and they bring into, you know, their family, their own history and their own needs, their own aspirations, their own work uh, dreams and work, you know, uh, desires. So they, they are to be accounted for. So we, when we speak of self-care, there's different types of self-care. There would be social self-care, emotional, physical. So there's a, it, it's very important to, uh, to make sure that we satisfy all those you know, self-care bits without feeling guilty for not being with our children. Oh, the guilt. You know, there's guilt. Oh, element, the guilt. Yeah, that's what all the parents I see talk about. That's what I feel as a parent all the time. You know, being guilt-ridden and, uh, and that layer of, of I'm not there enough. How can I be there more? And I haven't been there enough, as you were saying, you yeah. know? Yeah, I, it made me quite I mean, emotional uh, looking back, being able to say that I have been there or I was a good enough parent. You know, yeah. Winnicott, you know, the famous uh, child psychologist from the UK, used to say that we need to be good enough mothers, good enough fathers. We cannot be perfect fathers or mothers, but we can be good enough. Yeah. The same for that's, good enough. That's a nice way of looking at good enough. And I, I, was, I just wanted to pick up on that whole thing about, you know, fast-paced. I've asked you about the fast-paced nature of this society. I've asked you about the fast-paced nature of this society, the old work hard, play hard mentality that we're all sort of led to believe an expat, uh, expat lifestyle. But can we use it as a bit of an excuse as well? Potentially. <laughs> 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 you know, right. look, Shall I go and get on the naughty step now? Look, look, yeah, on the naughty <laughs> Parenting's difficult all over the world, isn't it? Yeah. You know, wherever you are, it's, it's, certainly a ch it's certainly a challenge because you've got to be a parent. To be a parent, you have to be able to cope in unpredictable and chaotic mm. circumstances. Mm. And here, in, if you're an expat here, you're here without that wider, that wider family community. How do you think parents adapt when they move here as expats and what is that process? Yeah, it's a very huge adaptation yeah, element. So the, we speak of two types of uh, adaptation to a, to a host country. We speak of either acculturation or assimilation. You imagine this as a spectrum of, of adjustment, where on the one side you have assimilation, you fully assimilate into the habits and the, the customs of the host country, you, while completely letting go of your habits that you bring, you know, that you were raised with in your home country. And all the way to the you know, more balanced part of the spectrum where you have a good mix of both. Where you both maintain some cultural identity and elements uh, that pertain to your country of origin, mm -hmm. the language, customs, traditions, uh, habits, while at the same time integrating and, and, and uh, um, adapting uh, and adjusting to the surrounding culture. So finding that right balance, I, I find, makes it makes adjustment to Dubai or you know to expat life yeah. way way more way easier, because you can satisfy both those needs. Yeah, both developing, helping our children develop that sense of cultural identity. I am Greek or I am British, while at the same time I'm a, I'm a Dubai expat. Mm. So like a double identity, mm. and fostering that. Yeah, absolutely. And doctor, how do you support the mental health side of single parenting? Because I have friends of mine, very close friends that are single parents of, you know, one child or more. And the mental health pressures that come with being a single parent in Dubai are enormous. And you mentioned the mom guilt, but there's also the mom shaming as well. You know, so how do you support single parents on that journey? Yes, that's a, that's a very important question. It's a, it's a lot about listening to them, about, a lot about empowering them and uh, helping them find that, you know, uh, making sense out of their story, sort of being able to say that I am a single parent and owning up to it, you know, taking up that responsibility and, and owning up to that identity <coughs> without, without feeling uh, guilt-ridden. Uh, we do a lot of uh, stress management. Okay. 
anxiety management, time uh, planning and, uh, you know, prioritizing, um, prioritizing self-care while at the same time better structuring their days and their times, making sure that we do spend that quality time with our children uh, while we uh, also satisfy our own, uh, attend to our own personal needs. So, Dr. Vesilik, you, uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, we are going to move to a quick report right now and I would love to discuss more. I definitely need to chat to you more about mum's guilt because I feel that all day long. But now it's time to put the spotlight today in uh, towards a brand that is becoming a household favourite here in the UAE, the phenomenal House of Pops. Hi, I'm Mazen Kanaan. I'm 38 years old, I'm Lebanese. I'm the CEO and co-founder of House of Pops. House of Pops is a 100% natural ice cream company. It has been launched five years ago. Three things makes it unique, purity, wellness, and sustainability. We are solving two problems. One is related to this compromise that the people used to have between having a nice, tasty ice cream and keeping up with their health and wellness. House of Pops solves the problem. They offer them, we offer them a healthier alternative for all the high sugar, high fat ice cream products. Initially, when we started, we had a challenge on setting up the company. We are self-funded, so we needed really to go step by step. And this proved to be a good challenge. But the product worked well and the people have welcomed our proposition. And with time, we were able to overcome that. Now we are financially strong and we are looking for more and more growth. I think we had an impact when it comes to providing an alternative for the people who want to have a healthier snack. Uh, now the mom can, can offer her kids something which is healthier and the kids can enjoy a really good ice lolly. Another thing I think we have put, made an impact on is the environment, where we have a strong sustainability agenda, where we reduce any plastic we use in our packaging. We actually, we don't use any plastic in our packaging. We plan to be the number one health and wellness ice cream brand in the region and hopefully globally. I wake up early in the morning, I'll do 10 minutes of yoga, I'll dial in my espresso, do a cappuccino, then go play paddle and then relax on the beach the rest of the day. Absolutely delicious. Amazing story there at the House of Pops. Uh, OK, from spotlight to roundup, time for a daily roundup. Who's got their finger on the pulse? It is, of course, Ash. <laughs> Thank you for that, Tom. Now, did you know that a new study conducted at the University of Essex in the UK has found that returning to live with parents can have a positive effect on young adults' mental health? Contrary to the prevailing belief that going back to your paternal home is detrimental, young adults make successful transitions to adulthood, such as affordable housing and job training programs. Team, thoughts? Let's uh, start with you, Tom, because you, you left. Are you picking on you me? Left. <laughs> why not? I You're my favourite person. 57 to years ago. Yeah, exactly that. why I'm asking you. Um, look, uh, there ain't no way I'm Ooh. moving back to my parents yeah. so many times soon. However, um, I do know of a number of people who've been through tough times in the UK at the moment where the economy is very challenging. Um, and a lot of people have been forced to, to, to look for alternative means. And I suppose if you're looking at it from a mental health point of view, not having the stress of having to pay your bills or not knowing where you're going to, 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 to sleep, getting back, coming back to your parents' home would remove that element of stress. How long your parents... Will remain, allow you to remain uh, yeah. in that environment. True. Is another thing this is our, we've got three children, and, and so they are now 30, 28, 25. We are only now, for the first time, living without the children. Oh, wow. wow. But one has moved in across the road. <laughs> <laughs> just let go of me. So it still comes over for something. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I agree. Borrow that bag of sugar.
I agree with many things you said, Tom. Actually, I mean, the idea of free food and laundry is amazing, but also I just don't think it's healthy for young adults to be living with their parents because they need to go out there in the real world and have their own struggles, spread their wings. Having said that, my daughter, who's just five and a half years old, I love the idea. I would love for her to stay with me for as long as she wants, but I don't know. She's only five and a half right now. Check in with me 15, 20 years from today. <laughs> I may have a different opinion. I don't know. No. Doa, what about you? So I think culturally as an Arab, it's very common mm. for, for us to kind of infiltrate yeah. and get bigger and the house grows different wings and stuff. And, and I can see all the benefits to it, but I can also see the positives when a young family have moved out on their own and the wife gains a little bit more independence, but they keep it together for the family, for the kids specifically, to have support with raising your kids. It takes a village, right? So what do you think, Doctor? Yes, I'm, I'm uh, torn, you know, between, uh, you know, there's this cultural ele element again here that, uh, well, the, that makes a lot of sense, you know, having the grandparents involved, that's what I miss the most, living in Dubai, you know, not having the grandparents involved in my child's day-to-day, -day, in my children's day-to-day -day life. So definitely that covers that need. But at the same time, we know that around the age of two years old, two, we, a child needs to separate, individuate from their parents. So the process of individuation, separation, begins at that, that young age. Wow. So our uh, parenting needs to aim at you know, developing autonomy, helping our children develop autonomy, while at the same time having a solid base of attachment and connection to the parents. So. Interesting. At the moment, I'm struggling to get my daughter out of my bed because, you know... It, Keep her it, there. It, there will be a time where she's 16 years old and still cuddling up next to me. Which Keep I, her there. No, Keep her there. Not. You know, she'll <laughs> be out there by adolescence. I'm, uh, I'm a proponent of... Uh, so if that person you know, starts at two years old, when, <laughs> yes, is it, when, is it, it, when does it end? Never well, ends. depending, depending. Never ends, does depending. It? I had a colleague who was doing uh, his uh, thesis at the same time as me on uh, on interminable adolescence. Oh. So we see a lot of those, uh, you know, eternal teens uh, these days. So you know, struggling to uh, to come out of adolescence with dependence to parents and uh, you know uh, relying on their parents' opinions or their parents' approval too much, or you know having this feisty uh, revolution like a, 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 a defiant, a positional attitude to life. Uh, so, yeah, it's an, it's an uh, open-ending... It's a work uh, in progress. It's yeah. a work in progress, yes. <laughs> Completely. I think, I think whoever is. pays the bills has the last say. Yes, I can say know. that now, now that I'm the one paying the bills. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it. Yes. No, it, it's, uh, it's, a lot of, uh, it's a lot of work, you know, to, uh, to help our children yes. uh, reach that autonomy while they've, at the same time they can feel connected to us. Exactly. So, uh, our children that, that, lived with, that lived with us into their late, into their 20s, did all of that individualization mm -hmm. whilst living with us. Yes. We saw it that's, all. That's achievable. It's you know, achievable. It, it, and I think that, and it's, uh, you know, it's that's about set boundaries them up. also. It's about yes. boundaries. You can live together, but the boundaries can be there. As long as you do the dishwasher. <laughs> as long as you take on some responsibility. No, but seriously, like that's a way to take responsibility, to take on an adult responsibility. Yeah. Or uh, to pay a bill. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to live separately to be uh, responsible as an adult. Yeah. Like Absolutely. you can still do that while living with your parents and respecting, you know, and taking on uh, some of the chores or taking on adult adult responsibilities. That was the only way in my household. But Dr. Yeah. Basiliki, thank you so much for your thank time. You. And you. I'm loving the work that you're doing down there. I'm definitely going to tell my mom friends about it. So thank you so um, much. We'll be back after the break with tips on choosing the right schools for your kids. Don't go anywhere. Thank you. Welcome back. Our next guest today provides trusted resources for parents searching for independent school reviews and up-to-date education news and guides. Please welcome Carly Allen, the international editor of whichschooladvisor.com. Carly, thank you so much for being here on the show. It's a pleasure. Thank you. We are actually in the process of changing our daughter's school because just when you're paying an arm and a leg, they also take your kidney and spleen. <laughs> it is so expensive here in Dubai. Um, we weren't the sort of parents who started planning quite early on from the time the pregnancy test kit turned positive. Some parents start planning from that point on. We, we weren't one of those parents. When would you say is the right time to start doing your research? Of course. And yes, what I would say, first of all, is do not panic. And yes. it doesn't have to be from that moment. You know, you get the pregnancy test or you're coming out of the delivery room. 
But having said that, it is an incredibly big decision that you're making for your child, possibly one of the biggest. So you've got 13 plus years of education ahead of them, so you want to make it right. So you have got the advantage of that time, you know, once the child is in those early years, to start having a look and really make sure you're taking into account all those different factors when choosing a school. That said, you don't have to get your child into school from the age of six here, it's not compulsory. Um, so you do have the choice of possibly keeping them at home, put the, putting them into nursery, but there are many, many schools now opening up those early years educations departments from the age of three where you can put your child into that, so that's certainly a consideration. So we've had a recent change in the last few years in the UAE, and one of those big changes is, is the early childhood centres, the rise of the extended nursery. So now some nurseries are able to take children right up until the age of six. Mm -hmm. How popular do you think that change has been? And how many parents do you see opting for that extended nursery care? We are, it, it is popular and I think but we get parents who are very torn and it is really a really big decision that they're looking at. You know, Do I want that sort of smaller, perhaps more nurturing kind of environment within a, within a nursery um, where they're just the, the children of just that smaller age group or do I want them to be part of a much larger all through school or a primary school where they may have access to much larger facilities. They'll have access to specialist teachers perhaps in the arts, in sport and in languages that they might not always get. They, they can get within that nursery setting. So there are definitely advantages of both and there are disadvantages to both. It's also important to look at um, the term times of the nurseries versus the schools. Obviously some nurseries can be open completely throughout the year which can really benefit like we've been talking about many parents now working both full time not able to take those full summer holidays off and go away. So look at that as well. So there are, you know, there are definitely some key comparisons to make. Big decisions for parents, especially uh, for a large expat community here to you keep your kids near you, to you send them to school in your home country, etc. No shortage of schools here, no shortage of curriculums, no shortage of language schools um, uh, and different, sort of different schools from different parts of the world. Where are we at when it comes to standard? I know that's a really loaded question, but it's, it's the age-old question, isn't it? I mean, it's my opinion that standards have raised considerably over the recent years. I think it's much more competitive than it was, and I go back even sort of, you know, several years when I was looking for my son's primary education, which actually feels a bit of a lifetime ago, and the choice was much smaller. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think I was sort of talking about it earlier, there were just, you know, four or five schools. It was if you weren't in those, then you were sort of, you weren't going to get that gold standard of education. That's not the case anymore. There are there is a much much wider choice of schools here, offering a massive breadth of curriculum, um, a massive massive breadth of specialisms as well. There are schools that are specialising perhaps more in sport or the arts or in STEAM and technology as well. Looking at that, and then parents also have the advantage of being able to get a very high standard school that's perhaps closer to home. So you're not having to put your child on that long commute or that long bus ride out to get to a school. And I know many families where the kids are happily scootering and biking and walking to school which is absolutely fantastic to see that here but you can still see that they're getting that wonderful standard of education. And Carly what do you think parents need to consider when they're choosing a school for their child? There are so many factors that come together and I say curriculum is definitely one of those okay. um, and that becomes much more significant as you move up throughout the secondary and those senior years. It's still important within the primary years but there are opportunities to, to perhaps change curriculum but it becomes much more significant once your child is going up through the secondary years and taking those qualifications. And obviously you need to look at that curriculum in terms of do you want it to be close to the curriculum you would be following in your home country? Do you plan to return back to your home country ultimately and want to follow that system or do you know where your child may be studying further down the line for university and what qualifications would be important. Um, location like just touching on just now that's also quite important you know like I said you don't you want to sort of avoid that long commute or that that bus journey to school and there are so many more schools now opening up within these new communities that we have that you do have that element of choice and cost, we have to come back to cost. <laughs> Just a key fact, yeah. <laughs> and you know, there are fees that are ranged from under 10,000 to over 120,000. Yeah. So, you know, you have got that choice. And what I would encourage people to look at your price bracket, look at what you can afford. 
and then look at those choice of schools within that bracket. Don't try and look at a school that's 100,000 if you can't afford to pay that for the next 12, 13 years. But you will have that choice within your Avoid price bracket. Avoid keeping up with the Joneses, yeah? Huh? Absolutely, yeah. So, Absolutely. Kylie, would you say this is where your website comes in, widgeschooladvisor.com? How yes. can we use this to navigate the, through these decisions? It's a go-to site for literally everything. We have a review of all the schools across the, across the UAE, um, independently written, so our editors are going in there, researching that school, talking to the leadership team, talking to the students, talking to the parents, finding out everything we need to know across the board, not just looking at the curriculum, looking at the well-being aspects of the school, looking at the sports offering, the arts, and so on. So, And we also support that with many guides that talk about the different types of curricula. So particularly if you're moving into um, Dubai for the first time and you're not aware of perhaps, you know, want to know more about the International Baccalaureate Programme, we go into great depth about what that curriculum can offer you. And then also looking at results, um, we look at the reports that come out every year from the KHDA, for example. All these different aspects that we want parents to look at on balance and put them all together to come up with their, um, their criteria for choosing that best school. We can't thank you enough. Thanks so much indeed. Um, a big thank you to all the team at Which School Advisor. Uh, do stay with us for a few moments though because you get the privilege, uh, Carly, of sitting there and watching the quiz now as well. Um, where we can just watch on and hope it uh, and wish it wasn't us. So it's over to you to work for today's quiz. But it is you, Principal Lisa. Great. So I hope you've been paying attention quiz. because we are going to quiz you. Okay. DXB in 60, so try and get as many answers right in 60 seconds. Okay. Are you ready? Go. Okay, we're going to cue the clock <laughs> in. Three, two, one. What day is it on the show today? Global Day of Parents or Children's Day? Global pa Day for Parents. Correct. Which popular author and speaker did we feature on the show? Gary V or Jay Shetty? Jay Shetty. That's correct. Dr. Vesaliki Simoglu is a psychologist or a school counsellor? She's a psychologist. Correct. Which brand was featured on the show? House of Cards or House of Pops? House of Pop. <laughs> Perfect. What is House of Pops known for? Natural lollies and ice cream or candy floss? Natural lollies and ice cream. Absolutely correct. And Carly Allen is the international editor for whichschooladvisor.com or Yelp reviews. Whichschooladvisor.com. That's right. What is the purpose of Global Day of Parents? To celebrate teachers or to honour parents worldwide? To honour parents worldwide. Absolutely. Which hormone is commonly known as the love hormone and is associated with bonding between parents and their children? Oxytocin or dopamine? Oxytocin. Correct. Which developmental stage typically uh, occurs during adolescence, puberty or toddlerhood? Puberty. Yes. <laughs> Time is up. Okay, great. Well done. Thank so, you. Well done. We are hearing that the I think officials you've got have given you every... nine. Nine. You yes. got everything right. A nine. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, let's have a look at the well uh, leaderboard. Uh, so leaderboard is coming up there. Yeah, and you're equal top with the leaderboard at the moment. So um, a job well done. I know. This is such fun. <laughs> equal the leaderboard. Top of the class. Top of the class. Exactly. Principal Lisa, top of the class. Thank you so much indeed for uh, your time. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, and thanks for all time. your great advice. And of course, Kelly, thanks so much indeed Thank as well to you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. Right, uh, we're going to take a short break. Uh, after the break, don't go anywhere. We've got uh, plenty of entertainment coming your way shortly. Now, amazing, amazing. I absolutely love that era and I have it on vinyl, so I'm so excited to hear you um, perform. But where can people find you usually around Dubai? Uh, I perform on Thursdays, Friday and Saturday night, late, uh, and part of a kind of Las Vegas style show in the 53 Dubai, which is in the Grand Sheraton Hotel on the Sheikh Zayed. Come over. You, amazing. You'll like it. Amazing. And where can people find you on social media? When host official. Amazing. And Thank I you. hear you've got a fan favorite for us tonight, so I'm excited. Yes. So I'm going to let you set up, and it's over to you, Tom. Well, thanks very much indeed. Yes, uh, a quick reminder that tomorrow we announce the winner of a one-night stay for two, including a bit of breakfast down at the Palazzo Versace <laughs> Hotel right here in Dubai. So, uh, want to be part of it? Hurry over now to the Dubai One TV Instagram page. Find the competition. Uh, post and let us know it's as simple as this why we should pick you we would also love to hear from you you can use the hashtag dxb today to let us know what exciting things you are up to or who you would like to see on the show today how is it for you guys today i mean speaking to two parenting experts you definitely get a lot of insight into that but still there's a long way to go for me for sure
Do you think so? I think so, yeah. Because, I mean, we were talking about guilt a little bit earlier on. Yeah. And that's something you constantly live with. And how, do you, do you feel, because I know that mums feel guilt. Do dads feel the same, Tom, yeah. would you say? Yeah? Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah. But um, it, 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 it's, yeah, it's a constant. And I'm yeah. sure it's something that, yeah, that we, we all feel a little bit guilty because the amount of time um, we work here. Yeah. And it's a very hard working part of the world. Yeah. Um, but then again, you've got to you've got to weigh that up with the, the other side of it, haven't you? Which is, yeah. you know, you afford your children great opportunities here, yes. have an amazing lifestyle, yeah. make some amazing friends, get a great uh, for, uh, start in life, etc. And I'll just go home and cuddle the kids a little part of this evening, I suppose. You know, you, you appreciate the time you've got. Yes. That's the other thing, yeah. yeah. Appreciate the time you've got with them because exactly. it does disappear pretty darn quickly. Yes. For sure, but it has been an amazing show. I've learned a lot. You guys have taught me a lot about parenting. And as my friend says, you will never be ready. So just, you know, <laughs> enjoy it when you get there. Nice, yeah. <laughs> but that's it for us. But join us again yeah. tomorrow for a weekend special. Good night. And now over to you, Mr. Host. Mr. Host. <laughs> When marimba didn't start to play, dance with me, you make me sway. Like a lazy ocean hugs the shore, hold me close, sway me more. Like a flower bending in the breeze, bend with me, sway with ease. When you dance, you have a way with me, stay with me, sway with me. Other dancers may be on the floor Stay, but my eyes will see only you Only you have that magic technique When we sway, I go in I can hear the sound of violence Long before it begins Make me trill as only you know how Sway me smooth, sway me now Other dancers may be on the floor Stay, but my eyes will see only you Only you have that magic technique When we sway, I go in I can hear the sound of violence Long before it begins Make me trill as only you know how Sway me smooth, sway me now when marimba rhythm start to play, dance with me, you make me sway. Like a lazy ocean hugs the shore, hold me close, sway me more. Like a flower bending in the breeze, bend with me, sway with ease. When you dance, you have a way with me, stay with me, sway with me. When you dance, you have a way with me. Stay with me, sway with me. When you dance, you have a way with me. Stay with me, sway with me. Thank you so much. Wonderful audience.